And the last thing I want to talk about is uh, office hours. Um, you can bring any project, any problems, and the consulting Rails experts at Evil Martians can help you out. Uh, they don't look very businessy. One second. There we go. Fixed. Um, which is convenient, and almost like I planned this segue, because our next speaker is from Evil Martians. I've done this before. Um, we promoted this talk from the CFP, which is one of my favorite things to do, and I am sure that this talk will raise questions, provide answers, and energize us for all the work of day two tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, Iri. Wow, what an absolutely mind-blowing, incredible honor to be here giving a keynote at RailsConf. I'm pumped, and it's a pleasure to be Nadia Adonai's keynote sandwich partner. <laughs> you, you're on the other side of the sandwich right now. And it's a joy for me to have this chance to take you all my friends, my future friends, on a little journey with me. Uh, just last year, uh, RailsConf in Atlanta was my very, very first RailsConf. And I met some beautiful people, <laughs> participated in some cool events with cool folks, and made many new Ruby friends, like I'm sure you're doing today. And I got so much support and encouragement. And I wanted to be useful. I wanted to be useful for this community as well. So, hi. <laughs> My name is Irina, but you can call me Ira. I'm the CEO of Evil Martians Consulting Company and uh, co-founder of AnyCable, a WebSocket infrastructure company. And I like AI-generated images, as you will see. So I was thinking about something that was missing. What we hear is lots of stories about companies from the first wave of the popularity of Rails, Shopify, GitHub, Intercom, many others. And we know about their success, right? But when we say, when, when we discuss the topic of is Rails dead, something like that, what we mean is, are there companies that are choosing Rails today? Are there new companies that are choosing Rails today or switching to Rails? So this is what is, is missing in, in our conversations and stories like Nadia's stories are super important. So I felt that the startup stories in general are missing from the conversation. And coincidentally, these are exactly the stories that we at Evil Martians are exposed to. Because we work for startups. We work with startup teams hand in hand building features with them, helping them grow their teams, keep up productivity, grow their businesses. And we contribute and we witness their success. And I just wanted to share something that we already knew, that something about startups on Rails. But of course I wanted to collect more, more stories. And I hit the phones, I called, some of our clients, and then I added a few AnyCable clients. And then I reached out to companies and startups that I knew about before. And then I reached out to more companies, more startups. Few of those are actually existing products, but the majority are new businesses. Finally, I spoke to a few companies that are so early stage that don't yet have a logo or name. <laughs> and then something unexpected happened because 
This was supposed to be. Yes, guys, there are startups choosing Rails today. Talk, a simple one. But then those conversations, the others, there was the other side of them that made me so motivated to build. And this is what, how I want you to feel after this talk today. I wanted you to feel the same way. I want you to feel the urgency to build in this community. So let's begin. We begin in January 2023, North Carolina, four repeat founders. Team Mike, Suzanne, and Joey already built and scaled and sold their businesses to other big companies. They know the thing. Now they have a problem they face themselves and they want to solve it and they gather to solve it. And the problem, the task is simple to paint a house. Uh, Tim and Suzanne want to paint their own house. It sounds simple. But they want to do it the same way they do everything, right? Using a mobile application or a, a laptop, ordering stuff like you order pizza. And they're not able to do this, and this is where they realize that there is a huge market for these types of services and a huge market for this product. And it's, this is how Kraftwerk is built, is created. So Kraftwerk hires people who paint houses. Sounds simple, they paint them uh, outside and also interior surfaces, including kitchen cabinets. Sounds simple, right? But Kraftwerk's purpose is to make this work efficient, as efficient as possible. Just think about this, all the scheduling, planning, uh, invoicing, collaboration, communication, everything has to happen on this platform. And then there is also geography. Uh, houses have locations, people have to go to those locations, this thing has to be taken into account. Now, this is the product. Let me tell you a bit more about the CTO, Mike. Mike had a little bit of experience with Rails back in his days in the University of Connecticut. It was Rails 2. So you can date him. Ah, sorry. Sorry, Mike. Um, now, he went to work for Microsoft .NET, of course, JavaScript. He had a couple of startups. He, had a, he ran a coding school uh, teaching Python. And then he went to work for Google. Now, there is also something about him. He's your fellow, our fellow uh, podcaster. <laughs> He's the host of Software Engineering Daily, one of the hosts. Now, this team needs to decide on the stack for their product, for this product, for Kraftwerk. What do you think they choose? <laughs> and yes, this concludes my talk for today. Thank you, guys. <laughs> well. Yes, so this Disney story lasts for three months. Uh, after those three months of building with Next.js, the team has a major planning meeting when they realize they need to build a lot. There is a, there is a custom CRM, lots of CRUD, lots of integrations. There is just so much to build, and the speed of delivery with Next.js is just not enough. And this small team realizes that they're never going to make it with Next.js. They're never going to be able to take this off the ground. And they need to. This is the only thing they need. They're not looking for fancy tech, right? So finally, they are deciding to switch to what they call boring tech. 
Rails, of course. And what do you think? It works. <laughs> of course it works. So this small team of only founders is able to build out this crazy application. Something sounds familiar <laughs> to the story we heard this morning, of course. It's crazy how fast you can ship features with Rails. This is what Mike says. There is a similar story, uh, the story of Yato, and it's a similar story of switching from Next.js to Rails after a few months. And specifically, the CTO, Garen, says that it was convention of over configuration principle that relieved him of the decision-making nightmare, of the constant uh, decision-making, uh, choosing the tools, choosing the third-party services in the J JavaScript community and the ecosystem. A few more quotes from different people. Uh, John from Healthy says Rails is complete, and this is, this is why they choose it. Dorian from Butterglad praises the ecosystem, the open source ecosystem specifically. It's not the third party services, it's the gems, the open source that we use and that we have to reach out to in the, in the Rails ecosystem. So Kraftwerk is a story of success. What happens after that? R remember, they started in January 2023. In beginning of April, they switched to Rails. In the summer, they get accepted to Y Combinator. They finish it successfully and raise a $6 million seed round in November. Let's celebrate this. This is our win. <clears throat> Thank you. So this sounds simple, right? They had some experience with Rails, you will say, right? Well, let me tell you another story. We begin it a little bit earlier, 2021. Can you guess this city? This is New York. <laughs> the pandemic, it was a bit grim. But now, this time, these are three 20-year-old founders, and they start the company called WAP. Let me tell you their story. Jack, Steven, and Cameron. They were so young when they met online in Facebook groups. They were 15. And as many young guys, they like fancy sneakers. But unlike many other high schoolers, they turn their passion into a hustle, and they build software called uh, sneaker bots. I've just learned about this myself. Um, but it helps them resell those limited sneakers. Now you know this uh, also. <clears throat> so when they are 21, they are recent college grads already with some experience, but still 21-year-old people, young people, they decide to build something bigger. And this is a marketplace for all things digital, from crypto to uh, fitness courses to games to software, anything digital, kind of influencer style. It's called WAP. So, this sounds like the story of Shopify, if you think about it. But nowadays, lots of us are a little bit jaded after the fall of the Rails hype cycle. But these three folks, they bring the new perspective, the new view of the world. This is how I feel after speaking to them. They have this bright-eyed view of the world where they choose rails against the odds, if you think about this. Why? First of all, initially, 
they are skeptical about Ruby. And you can see why. First of all, they don't have experience with that, and their friends don't have experience with that. But also, something that I didn't expect is <clears throat> serverless is their new norm. Serverless is the default for them. And what we can call server full application, what we think is just the normal application, is, is something else, is something they've never had experience with. So it's not just Ruby, it's not just Rails, it's just the server full application that's, that is, becomes a challenge for them. But the good news, things and tricks that worked on us work on them. <laughs> so this is the other um, new Ruby engineer, <laughs> uh, Kai, and he, he, she, he, he shared the same wow moment with Jack from uh, WAP. They both said they, that they had a wow moment watching the 15-minute blog video. Just think about this. It's just the new version of this same video we all watched more than 10 years ago. What happens next? They get curious and how, they, how Jack puts it, I obviously fell in love with Rails. He just couldn't, nothing else could happen other than that. So they, they switch, they choose Rails, they build this Gen Z marketplace, and there is a familiar face here. Um, I don't know why, you should ask him. <laughs> Marco, where are you? <laughs> you should ask him. <laughs> now, what else do they say? Not just swap, but other people like them in those stories. So many people praise active record as the number one superpower of Rails. But the most, most importantly, what happened as the result is that this small team was able to ship every feature their customers asked for during the first two years of the product's life. Can you imagine anybody being able to say this outside of Rails? Frankly, I cannot. So WAP is an extremely successful story. They powered $322 million sales volume on the platform. Again, young Rubists. And they raised $18 million funding of course, got some features, some nice features. So, the only question that remains is this one. Is something they are curious about and kept asking me about. Why more startups are not choosing Rails right now? Because they had such a great experience with that. My final story for today. We begin in the same year, 2021, in Boston. There are two tech execs, and they, they start a project within a company, they call it Flexcar. Freedom and Ryan worked for Amazon, Google, Big Tech. Now Freedom is the CTO of Zipcar. And he starts this kind of longer-term car subscription company called Flexcar. And Flexcar soon splits from Zipcar. Now, if you think about car subscription, company, car subscription business. It's a lot. 
It's a lot. It's, first of all, it's a two-sided sort of market, marketplace. It has to be incredibly fast, real-time. It has to scale. And it has to be able to support growth of, of the network because it has to serve a large network of users and people and cars, if you think about this. So what do you think they choose in 2021 for their stack? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> but again, not just Java. This is Java microservices, and not just Java microservices, it quickly becomes over 70 Java microservices. And the team is doing everything according to best practice, according to how you are supposed to build software business in 2021 when moving forward. Now, <laughs> I'm gonna say this stack took them quite far. So in November, the company reported they, they covered 100 miles driven. It's quite a lot. But you know what? <clears throat> the team needs faster delivery. The team needs better productivity. And now they are entangled in 70 microservices and 30 plus databases. So Freedom, the CTO, says, we need a change. And how something I've just learned today, Freedom is here with us. <laughs> ask, him, ask him about this later. But I know he's done extensive analysis doing demo projects across all the different frameworks that are out there, Laravel, Django, Next, many of them. But in January 2024, Flexcar starts migration to Rails. Just think about this, just think about this. It's a, it's a huge team, dozens of engineers, and they all are Java engineers or uh, JavaScript engineers, like, like you guess. Um, it's, not hard, it's not simple in any aspect, if you think about the scope of this project. Switching 70 microservices to one monolith and changing from Java to Ruby, but Skeptics quickly fall in love with Rails and the productivity of a monolithic Rails application. It's just like a breath of fresh air to be able to run it, to be able to build in a monolithic app. But Flexcar is not the only team that told me that. Sarah, the founder and CTO of Flow, also switched from Java to Rails and said she felt she's going th three times faster. That's, that's how it works. So the success of Flexcar is happening as we speak because the release to production scale is scheduled for this night. <laughs> So thank you guys for your support and let's give Flexcar our encouragement and support. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know how you feel, but imagine I was doing those 25 conversations. I was so emotional. I was feeling everything, being inspired, being empowered by this, this 
these things that I've learned, but I also felt something else. Maybe a little bit of anxiety, maybe a little bit of, but mostly the, this is the feeling of responsibility. You know why? Because all those startups, and this is just a subset of hundreds and thousands of startups that choose Rails as we speak, they rely not just on Rails, on Rails ecosystem. They rely on things to be out there, <laughs> to reach out to. Jams, uh, cloud providers, educational materials, job boards, consultants, it all has to be out there for, to solve any problem that they're gonna face. And something I didn't, didn't realize, that CTOs are super good, super professional at finding community solutions. It's, it's a CTO skill to be able to find uh, solutions that are maybe less obvious, maybe they're, they don't, they're not mentioned in docs, but the solutions need to be out there. And I didn't, of course I didn't just talk to them about the niceties that we've just discussed. Kind of not, we didn't just talk about the praise, we talked about what's missing. And I think this is the part I love the most. Because I already knew that those startups exist. I've, I was already working with those startups choosing Rails in recent years and right now. But I didn't know this, what I'm going to share with you right now. Of course, I'm not sharing the entire feedback I got. Uh, this is pretty can be situational, can be personal, can be random, but I'm sharing the top five most wanted, most kind of requested things by the growing, by the, by the CTOs of growing companies. Quite specific, but think about this. Number five. <laughs> Number five, most wanted thing. It's kind of hard to guess because it's not technical. But others, I, I, I'm expecting you to guess them. Um, and this is about something that we had, that people like me had when we started with Rails back in 2012, 2014, when it was the most popular web framework. We had this overwhelming amount of support, people talking about Rails, people recommending Rails, people talking about the success. People who choose Rails today don't have this. And it is super noticeable for them. Daniel is the founder and CTO building in San Francisco Bay Area. And he shared the feeling of almost loneliness even though I know about dozens of companies building with Rails in the Bay Area, but we're not sharing, we're not connecting. Until recently, by the way. Uh, rubyconferences.org is your resource, and there's so many, sorry, I had to, <laughs> I had to just pull the, uh, the cities. There are so many conferences this year. I feel it's a turnaround happening in the community. There are also so many star, uh, meetups happening. Let's keep, them go, let's keep them coming, but let's not take this for granted. Because as of today, we've learned about at least one conference. It's going to be missing from the list. So let, don't take this for granted. This is new energy. If we sustain this, it's going to be a turnaround. If we sustain this level of activity, 
people will feel completely different. People already feel a little bit different, but we, we have to keep going. So let's do more local meetups and conferences. People, even people who don't come, still appreciate them happening. <laughs> Sounds crazy, but they, it, it's how it works. They want to know that Ruby, I want to know that there is a Ruby meetup in Paris, in London, in New York, in San Francisco, in Berlin, in Singapore, everywhere, in Tokyo, of course. You get it. <laughs> Let's not just preach to the choir, right? Let's do talks about Rails at non-Ruby events. We should do more of this. It's scary, but maybe I should do more of this. We should all do more of this. We should talk about Ruby on non-Ruby platforms, starting with Hacker News. Let's bring more praise. To, let's share more experiences at Hacker News and other resources. Okay, number four is technical. <laughs> and you might have guessed it if you know that I've just moved to San Francisco, but yeah, just kidding. This is about Ruby for AI. So, yeah, there's a, again, quote from Freedom. Not only him, but several people noticed that, look, we don't need Python anymore. AI is productized into APIs. Ruby is perfect for leveraging those APIs, applying those APIs, building products using those APIs. So it's, we are not doing enough in the community with AI. There are incredible developments. There, there are a number of SDKs and also the, the last one is just an example of applying React framework in Ruby. It's a, choosing, uh, it's a framework for choosing tools in AI. But what I'm trying to say is this is not enough and let's also contribute to those projects. Let's build more AI with Ruby and share about this. It's, uh, it's gonna be great, trust me. Um, number three is kinda simple, easy to guess. It's about something as kinda mundane as integrations, SDKs, and one thing is, some of them are not getting updated properly. Because this is what, how I want us to stop thinking. I want us to stop thinking that we don't need to upgrade our integrations. Think about those hundreds and thousands of startups choosing Rails today. They need new integrations, updated integrations. They need integrations with new tech. We all need integrations with new tech. Uh, just a few examples here. And I think what we could also do, we could also request those SDKs from the official providers. Let's not be shy about this. Number two, we're getting close. And this is something that every person, seriously, every person I spoke to, every CTO, was, is excited, excited about Rails full stack, Rails front end, the new, the new advancements with Hotwire, Turbo, and the ecosystem. But it's still, it's still not there. What I mean is, First of all, documentation. I got so many comments about documentation for Hotwire. 
uh, it's not just the official documentation that is missing the real, real life examples. All, now we have community documentation, hotwire.io, and it needs your contributions. If you're using Hotwire, share your experience, share your examples. UI component libraries. Think about Ruby engineers building front-end. It's obvious they need components, they need libraries. They, they're not familiar with CSS, let's, let's, be, let's, be, let's be honest. So, uh, there is a list of amazing initiatives, but I just wanna say it's just the beginning. None of those libraries is complete. None of these libraries is on par with the React ecosystem. So we need to contribute to those, to them. This is super important. Um, finally, <laughs> there is something that, like of course we don't wanna think about this, but optimistic UI is something that is be quickly becoming the new norm, especially for applications that want to have a competitive edge on the UX side. And there are many applications like that. Uh, somebody helped me prepare those animations. I, I'm not sure if they, they're gonna work, but this is what happens when you don't have optimistic UI, so you wait for the round trip to server, for the action to be kind of completed. And when you have optimistic UI, it's like an illusion of zero latency. So this is what, if you're using linear or many more popular products, you know what I'm talking about. We need to bring this into Hotwire. <laughs> this is the challenge. And there's, all, there's, by the way, there's already an optimistic UI challenge on Hotwire Club. That's the beginning. <clears throat> what do you think is number one then? If Hotwire is number two, then what's number one? This is the single most frequently requested thing from the CTOs of growing companies. Think about it for a second. The big companies we know, running on Rails, are using React. Let's admit, it's, it's known, right? The new startups that compete with existing businesses, they have to have a competitive edge on the UX side. And yes, Hotwire means the use case for React is becoming more narrow, but it's still there. There is a use case for React. You have complex data on the client side. You need React. So while it's great for Rails to have a straightforward front-end story in its own, it also needs a straightforward story of integrating with React, Vue, etc. And it's the same thing that happened with RSpec versus Minitest. Um, Postgres. Thank you. Versus MySQL. And this is the reason why Rails is successful, is that it's able to integrate with multiple solutions, not just one. Right? So, the, every company that is using React today is inventing their own bicycle. There is no happy path integration. And let me just outline the three kind of scenarios. So one is GraphQL. 
And GraphQL, we have GraphQL Ruby. It's sort of great. GraphQL is the only scenario where you get type safety for, Re for React. But it's still, the tooling is still missing. And the tooling for subscriptions is far from perfect. We are trying to build it with any cable, and I can say it's far from perfect. So, and this is GraphQL. Not everybody wants GraphQL. Now there is a REST API integration. And how do you ensure type safety for React in REST API? How do you ensure uh, like generators, the same experience that you have with Rails full stack, but for React, this is hard to get. Okay, we have open API, we're trying to build something here, at will Martians with Skuma, but it's not there yet. And finally, not everybody needs an API. The simplest way for a startup to use React is just to drop a React component into a view. And there is a superglue from ThoughtBot, and there is Inertia.js. But there is still no kind of clear happy path, and again, ensuring type safety and ensuring the same developer experience that React engineers uh, have in other uh, backend frameworks. It's still not there, so this is something to work on. And I know it's, I, I sound like, like almost like I'm talking about something forbidden, because this is, this is how people told me they feel. They feel almost left out. They feel like they can't even ask about React, tooling around React. And this shouldn't be like that. We should be able to integrate. So this is just an example, I'm sure if you can see, from trpc.io, whatever. It's an example of type safe, like mm, real-time types between server and client. So something changes on the server, and in the client you immediately see in IDE that something's wrong. We could build this. <laughs> we could build this, right? LSP something, you know better. So yeah. Now, you might be wondering, ah, so much work for Rails core team, <laughs> right? By the way, um, we have many of five of them here. I want you to give them a round of applause. Guys, it's not because I want to ask you to complete all of that. No, wait, bear, bear with me for a sec. So the core team, the core team is doing a lot, but I, I, I want to highlight just the three parts. Security, security of the framework, maintenance of the framework, and adapter, adapterization in broad sense, being able to integrate with different solutions. So the core team is doing a lot of unglamorous work in addition to their, also their ideas, their new initiatives, new things. Let's appreciate that. What I'm trying to say is that the things I mentioned are not for the core team to build. Why? This was never the plan. If you look at Rails doctrine, Rails is a big tent. Rails integrates with different ecosystem solutions. This is what we need. This is the world of applications built in Rails is just so big and so complex, there cannot be one solution for all. There needs to be many solutions, and those solutions come from outside the core. And if you're not convinced, this is a quote for you. 
Many CTOs told me they prefer community built solutions. Why? Maybe because you can find solutions that are built specifically for fast growing companies in the community. So, the future of those startups, the new companies, is up to us all. And there is something I'm noticing that my friends from the community are discussing, something that I see myself among my own thoughts, and something I see on our, on our team at Evil Martians. Sometimes we feel that we need someone's blessing. We need someone's permission. And without that permission, we are stuck. We cannot build without this person telling us to do so. I want to tell you something about this. Notice those thoughts. <laughs> and rebel. Rebel because the only person stopping you is yourself. We are a super mature community. We've been through a lot. And people, businesses, people of all ages, choose Rails today, not because it's hyped, but because they can build as fast as possible with it. There is nothing else better for them out there. Just think about this. This means Rails has actual value. The ecosystem it has actual value. It's time for us to move confidently forward, to understand that there is a core which is important, but the ecosystem is now maybe even more important, moving forward. And this is the sign of a mature ecosystem. So we should build. This is exactly the right moment to build in this community. And yes, earn money doing so. Yes, please do. <laughs> build educational courses, build software, build commercial open source, build consulting, build your personal brand, build internally within companies, use open source as marketing. There are so many ways to become commercially successful while building for the ecosystem, while building for this community. And this is the best community to build for, right? If you think that I'm theoretical, no. <laughs> I'm very, very practical here. Tomorrow, tomorrow is the hack day. When I'm saying build, I mean tomorrow. <laughs> so we're gonna have maintainers of open source. There's a better slide somewhere on that, but collaborate with them. Bring them, bring them your feedback, bring them your success stories. If you're using open source successfully, tell this to the maintainers. They are not getting this. They're only getting issues, let's be honest. <sighs> but also share your feedback. Contribute, upgrade libraries, use tomorrow for all of this. 
share feedback, contribute and upgrade libraries, build new integrations, pitch new integrations, create and share content, and start local meetup. We, cannot, we can do all of this tomorrow, together. And whatever you do, don't be shy about building with Rails. <laughs> I'm practicing what I preach here, not being shy. <laughs> I'm sharing something we've built, Edible Martians. So it's um, just a page where we share all the open source, all the dependencies, all the tech that we depend on and that we recommend for fast-paced companies. It's the first version, but we're going to keep this resource updated. This is the difference with our blog posts, which I know you know about, because we will keep this resource updated. And we'll, we'll be adding to this. So check this out. And on that note, I want to thank you for being here. This is, this is me, uh, this is what I'm going to be doing jet lagged this, this afternoon. Um, and thank you. Please support Ukraine. <clears throat> yeah.